How you doing, folks? Welcome to the God Shot on motivation and discipline. And uh, you might be thinking, why am I choosing to do this at this time? Well, as many of you who watch these videos know, I'm out there on the front line meeting thousands of people, you know, over the course of a year. And so many are voicing that they are having trouble getting motivated, keeping focus, being disciplined, unable to get things done. A um, lot of different degrees of that. Now, a certain amount of it, I believe, is depression and anxiety. And there are videos on YouTube that uh, Cindy Garcia, a famous uh, therapist, and I did together on those topics of anxiety and depression. But I think there's some other angle to understanding the nature of uh, motivation and discipline. And these two guys with me on this video are my heroes right now because they are demonstrating to all of us, I think, they're not trying to be heroes, they're just doing what they need to do. But because of what they've achieved, I think that if they could do what they could do, a lot of people watching these videos can maybe, you know, tackle whatever it is they got to do. Okay, so uh, without further ado, uh, I would like to just uh, introduce Robert. Many of you know Robert. He is a uh, world famous um, TikTok uh, creator. Um, his most famous video has gotten, what is it, 10 million? 10 million views. 10 million views. So uh, you may recognize that face or maybe the side of his face as it was slapped by his mother in that video. Maybe I'll throw it in at the end. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Robert, tell us about your journey um, with the, well, first let me introduce my brother too, and then I'll come back to you. Okay. And then there's my brother, Tommy, who has also been on the weight loss journey. Um, and he's got his own, I guess, motivation for wanting to do that. At obviously a different time of life than Robert is, but welcome to both of you. Thank you for giving me a few minutes of your time with this. And I'm really praying as we get started that, you know, your words will sink in the hearts of anybody watching because it is what you could probably offer them is something we all need right now. Okay. So Lord guide our session and make this be something that makes a difference. Amen. Amen. All right. So Robert, take it away. You first. All right, well, my name is Robert, and all my life, I've really been like the, you know, the, always been the bigger guy, and it just got to the point where I went to the doctor, and I saw my weight, because I never used to weigh myself, and I just seen the number, don't want to put it out yet, you know, I'll do it when I feel comfortable, you know, but I was just like in shock of how much that weighed, and my mom we were talking she just told me she just told me straight up she was like if you don't you know work on yourself you're gonna die oh. and yeah yeah you know i'd rather you know someone tell me the truth than you know than sugarcoat it oh she wasn't yeah. sugarcoating that that's for sure yeah. robert I mean, what are you 19 yeah i'm 19 19 to be told that the path you're on is going to lead to death that had to be pretty yeah. scary no, uh, yeah, I was, I was, you know, kind of scared, and I just wanted to, you know, I just, I started, you know, working out, and doing a lot of cardio, walk. I started walking more. I started eating better, and since this is like the topic of motivation, I did lose some motivation. I started, I got depressed uh, after one of my best friends. She passed away. And, you know, everybody has this something they're addicted to. Someone's, you know, people go relieve stress through working out, through smoking cigarettes, through drinking, through all this. And I went to food. So when I got really depressed, I just kept eating, eating, eating. And after she passed away, I went to like maybe, yeah, I went through like a deep depression, just lost motivation in working out. But then... After my grandma passed away, not that long ago, I mean, not that long after um, my friend passed away, I just, like, thought to myself, I was like, you know what, let me just do this for them. Like, I, I'm pretty sure they would want me to move forward and keep pushing. And I see my whole family just supporting me. So I started, you know, working 110% in everything I did. 
just kept working out every day, just kept not eating like bad foods. And I, after I you know, started weighing myself more, I started seeing progress and I just fell in love with just seeing the weight go down and down and down. And people telling me that, wow, you look like you're losing a lot of weight. So that's what really kept me motivated to just other people support and them telling me like they see a lot of progress going on. Yeah, so far I lost 150 pounds. Yeah. That's amazing. It's amazing. Hey, I'm sorry for your losses, but thank you for sharing what you did. I mean, a person could have had those kind of losses and stayed stuck in a depression and yeah. never made any moves. But the way you took it and said they would want me, you know, in their honor and for myself, of course, for yourself, of course. But in their honor, that was the extra push. Yeah, I didn't do it myself, you know. I had other people's help, like especially Cindy. Cindy helped me a lot through all that. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> so anybody that's struggling with weight issues that's watching this and knows Cindy, they can go to her for that too. Yeah, I didn't know she was good at that. <laughs> no, she was helping me more with like the depression part and to see in a different type of view, you know? Okay. Good. Yeah. Good. Thanks, Robert. So Tom, I think your circumstances are a little different, right? Uh, a little bit different, but first off, congratulations, Robert. That's that's a that's a tremendous amount of of weight, but it's also Robert a tremendous amount of willpower and and mountains that you overcame to do that because that's very much like yourself, Robert. Uh, my divorce is really kind of what put me over the edge. Uh, with the eating and, and being upset about the loss of our family and the whole change that that came about. And like yourself, you know, I went to uh, I went to food uh, to help fill that that void uh, that was there from the from the missing family and the missing uh, togetherness. Um, so I can totally relate to that. And I, and a lot of people do that. Everybody has a vice, whether it's drugs, alcohol, eating, smoking. It's unfortunate that in today's uh, day and age that we need something or someone to say, Hey, it's okay. So for Robert, you, it was the doctor, uh, for me, unfortunately, my doctors, I, my blood pressure and, uh, cholesterol and all those numbers, my uh, uh, sugar levels were all good. So I was obese, but I was within range. So it really didn't, you know, I no doctors yelling at me just yet. Um, but you all, we all get motivated from something. And I had several uh, motivations and reasons for doing this. And most of it is my family. And most of it is you know, your God gave you this body. God gives you your life. God gives you your soul. So with that all said, I wasn't taking care of what God gave me. God gave me this life. God gave me this body. And I wasn't taking care of it. So as far as the amount of weight I've had, I, I, I've lost 129 pounds as of April 1st of 2022, which is when we're pretty much 12 days out from recording this. Um, and that's really good. And I have, I have another 70 to 80 pounds to go. Um, and I believe I will be able to get there without a problem. Uh, staying motivated though, is definitely something like anything else, whether you struggle from alcoholism or cigarettes, smoking or drugs, you, you stop it and you go to uh, a program to get better and to do it. And, but there's always that opportunity to go backwards and like anything else you have to stay focused on it and more importantly if you do fall down you got to get right back up ask god the holy spirit to give you some strength and get back on course uh, because there's a lot of reasons in today's society that you can drop down and fall off and you want to make sure that you don't do that um, and, and knowing that God and Jesus, your Lord and Savior, is there for you all the time when you do sin or when you do fall off the program, it's, it, it's a motivation that just picks you up. And I'm going to touch on something Robert said. Robert said he looked at the, at the weight loss and it's just like, holy cow. I have to say over the last five months, people's noticing me, 
people saying complimentary things because they've seen the change in me. I've already set two people that are in my life. One is a friend and one is a coworker uh, on the track of how to lose weight and what to do and how to stay focused on it because they see the change in me, both spiritually and physically. You can see it. Um, and I had been praying to God for a long time to ask for him to take the, the, the Holy Spirit and move me to get going on this, to get uh, motivated to do this. And he did. And he's going to keep me on track uh, to do this because, like you said, I have another 80 pounds to go. Um, I'm sure Robert says he says he's got some more pounds to go. So you stay have to stay on focus with this and you have to realize that it's about changing your lifestyle. Anything that you have in your life that's not great is there for a, a change in your life. And then it's usually for the better. Yeah. Um, um, uh, you know, two things. One, you both have uh, said, uh, the time you just brought up the whole thing of how good it feels to have other people acknowledge it. Robert, have you had that experience of other people noticing like, whoa, you look yeah, good? Yeah, like a lot of friends, family, like a lot of people, you, you said it, Cindy says it. And I feel, you know, sometimes you always think like all oh, friends, you know, they're being a little bit nice. But when like people you don't know that just have seen you in the gym say it, it just hits a little bit different. And it makes you feel so much better about yourself. Yeah. It keeps you wanting to do more, you know? Yeah. You know, I just want to mention you guys did a radical path. I can't help but thinking you know, when COVID or well, when the gyms open back up and I, I started going to the gym again and there was a very kind of heavy woman, but she would move. She would do her dancing. She had her headphones in. She'd go in one of the side rooms of the gym and she'd be like moving, but very slowly, you know, she wasn't working off huge pounds and, uh, but she was moving, you know, she was dancing the music she liked. And part of me wanted to go in and say, sweetheart, you are never going to lose the weight that way. <laughs> But do you know something? Over the course of a year, it worked for her. She had a system that was the way she was going to do it, and it worked for her. So anybody who's watching this who's saying, I don't know if I can go as in pension all in as these two guys, you know, you got a plan and you stay with it. You can make the progress maybe more gradually. I've seen that happen too. Yeah. What, I, what I do, Tony, is I see anyone who's trying, anyone who gives it an effort to do it, I think is an amazing is an amazing step. And what we can all do is when we see people like that, try, I guess, to encourage them. Um, I had one of my uh, workers come to me. His, his wife actually came to me. He says, Tom, he listens to you, not only because you're his boss, but he respects you. And I laid out a plan for him and his wife to follow together, because if you've got two people doing it, I mean, Robert, you did yours pretty much on your own. And I kind of did mine on my own, meaning you're not married, right? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> just making sure you never know at 19. I, I was almost married at 19. So the reason I say that is because it's easy to do it when you have two people. It's a little bit harder when you're on your own uh, to do it. So the only thing I could say to anybody watching this who's looking to do something, try and build a little support group around you. Or if you can, it's always easier to do something like this with someone else because then you've got checks and balances on it um so i think it's 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 important to realize that you need to have a support group you, you really do i had a i had a weight watchers coach that always told me anything and everything regarding your health can be fixed with an apple and a bottle of water and that was 20 years ago. She said that to me. And that has resonated with me for a very long time. Because when you want to go and eat that quart of ice cream, try not to. Try and grab the, uh, the apple and the bottle of water. You know? Well, didn't work so good for Adam and Eve, though. But that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, speaking of apple and the bottle of water, I got to tell you, I feel guilty because I know with both of you guys, 
I'm there with you in situations where it's got to be hard to keep up the discipline. When you, Robert, when you come to our youth community on Tuesday nights or even Monday nights, yeah. we put out the snacks. Mm-hmm. There is like all kinds of chips and cookies and candy and all kinds of stuff. Tommy, we just finished having Palm Sunday at your sister's house, our sister's house, and all kinds of food that you can't really eat. Well, but not just for weight loss, but for dietary reasons. And you found a way to just do what you had to do. No desserts. And how do you keep up the discipline in those kind of situations that I'm kind of feeling guilty for putting you guys in? You, you have well, to make a me, decision. Go ahead, Robert. Go ahead. Uh, well, for me, like, you know, for everybody watching and they want to do this or for anything like, not just weight loss, but like, it's not easy. Like in the beginning, it's probably the hardest mental thing you'll probably ever go through. Just seeing everybody eat foods that you would love and you can't eat that is probably thing I've ever done in my life. But you just got to think to yourself, you just got to keep your, your goal in the back of your head. Just like, I want to be there. Like just I, what I do, I just imagine myself, you know, how happy I'm feeling once I hit my goal weight. And I, that's really what just keeps me disciplined, you know, right? And it's been to the point where I'm not, it doesn't really bother me anymore because it's been like more than a year of me doing this. So at this point, I'm used to it. But in the beginning, it was just super hard just seeing everybody eat their food. I will go to different rooms just so I will not even smell the food anymore. And yeah, that's what I try to do. Yeah. You are, you are so right, Robert. It's a, it's a challenge. Um, but Tony, I'll tell you, one of the hardest things for me was when we were over our other sister, Teresa's house, and she was cooking everything fresh. The kitchen cacciatore, the sausage and peppers, the pasta. And I was in the room while she's cooking it. And those smells were wafting over everything. But like Robert said, you get to a point where you just, I mean, I'm only like, seriously into this six months um but i have another goal because i'm a little older than robert that i had to do which was stop smoking and those were just something i did i just stopped it i said never touching another cigarette ever again and that's exactly how i'm at right now with this food i've lost my mental relationship and my love of food um because i realized and like anybody else, you know, your, your stomach is the size of your fist. And that's all you should have on your plate is the size of a fist. And I don't even eat that much anymore. Uh, you saw what I ate yeah, uh, on, on Palm Sunday, Tony. It was very little. I got filled very quickly. And I, you look back and you say some of the things like, as an ex-smoker, I hate people who smoke. I will never eat another hot dog again. I will never eat some of the foods I used to eat just because one, I know better. I know what's in them. And I also know it's not going to make me feel good. If you eat good food, you feel good. If you lose weight, you feel good. If you exercise, your endorphins are released and you feel good. So I'm on board with Robert hundred percent. You feel good. And that thought process has to be in the back of your head all the time because it's not a diet. It's a life change. Okay. So it's not enough to say no to something. You have to be saying yes to something that you want more. Correct. And what you want more is the good health. You want more, a good life. And more importantly, again, being, being a, a Christian, you want to be close to God and, 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 and respect the body that he gave you and the life that he gave you. So it's important to, to have a little bit of everything, a little bit of family support, uh, spiritual support and a strong mindset to get to what you want. And that's how Tony, you do that in anything in life. If you want it bad enough, you have to set your goal on it and you have to focus. You have to have help. You're going to fall down on the way. Everybody does it. That's normal. You're going to have days that are going to be bad, but then you got to be able to pick yourself up and get back on that horse and keep riding. Got you. 
Hey, listen, both you guys have uh, shared a lot here. Before we go, is there any last minute, uh, you know, ideas you have or any tips or anything for people to grow in their motivation and discipline? Anything that you learned from your experience that you'd like to share? I'll give you both you guys the floor one more time. You want to go first? So I'll go first. Go ahead, Robert. All right. Uh, for me, big tip is not to check your weight every day because, you know, mentally you're just going to see the same weight. Just, like, you're going to keep seeing the same weight over and over. Now, this process is not like it's not going to happen overnight. And I've seen people where they would just like bring themselves down, lose motivation from checking their weight every single day, sometimes multiple times a day. And they would just like see no progress and then they will lose the motivation. For me, what I would do, I would check my weight sometimes two weeks, every two weeks, every maybe every week, every two weeks, depends. But and you just see the more progress, you know, sometimes it's not going to be a lot. Sometimes you're going to think you definitely lost. You should have lost more. But honestly, if it's two pounds, if it's one pound, if it's any amount of pounds, you know, be happy with it mm -hmm. and just keep so you can work harder the next week, you know. And um, another thing, uh, I, I don't drink soda. I don't drink juice. I don't drink any of that stuff no more. A big thing that did help me was because, you know, everybody gets tired of just drinking plain old water, especially when, you know, everybody gets tired of it. I, what I do, I drink uh, something called Crystallite. It's zero calories, zero sugar, zero everything. And it helped me so much to get that, make that sweet urge to get, to just leave. So I won't get tired of that. I won't get tired of water. They have a bunch of different flavors and that helped me a lot. Okay, maybe we can monetize this video for the Crystal Light people. What do you think? <laughs> no, that's good advice. That's good advice. I think because over analyzing, checking too soon, too often, you won't see results. That's really solid advice. And that's another great adaptation. If something, if you're removing a lot of other products that are not good for you, and the one remaining is kind of boring, how do you uh, deal with that? Good advice there. Thanks, Robert. And uh, Tommy, what about you? Uh, Robert, you're 100% correct. Um, Crystal Light is a, uh, is a good product. I, I did more towards the... Uh, <laughs> Look at the, the two of you promoting the Crystal Light here. <laughs> well, because it is actually very little of it is needed in a bottle of water. And it has such good flavor. And it's really not bad for you. Um, but in the whole aspect of everything that we're talking about it's about motivation and it's about doing what you need to do to reach your goal to to be inspired and that's going to be no matter what it is you're choosing to do whether it's to study for an exam whether it's to get a good grade or to try and get a good job or to to not even have cavities or Whatever the goal is in your life, to get an education, to lose weight, to stop smoking, to stop using drugs, to stop drinking, whatever your goal is in life, okay, the, the, the tip I have to give at this point to get through some big changes in, in my life over the course of 50 plus years is that you have to do it with three things, your own will the help and guidance from someone who knows better than you. There's a lot of people out there like Robert and I who are willing to share stories and exp experiences for success. And the last but most important is to have Jesus and the Holy Spirit with you right there because they're the ones who are empowering you. I honestly feel the Holy Spirit came to me and said, Tom, it's time for you to get up and do it. And that's really what it what it takes. It takes those three things to to always stay focused, regardless of what the end goal is. If it's weight, that's great. I did it. I did a lot of my weight loss with protein shakes and protein bars, and, and, and eating very small amounts of food, and 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 moving as much as possible. That that's the goal for 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 and and the, and the key to losing weight. I took a lot of little different areas and, and, and companies and stuff like that. And I came up with my own plan, Tony, just like the, the woman in the, in the gym who was doing her own thing. And over time, it actually worked. Whatever it is in life, do it 
with those three things and you will be successful and you will be happy because that's the key. Robin, I see you nodding your head with that. You would agree with that assessment? 100% agree with um, almost everything he's saying. Beautiful. Well, you both have a mutual admiration society. You've been agreeing with each other all, all, all session. And hey, I really hope, I believe that if this gets seen by people, I hope you guys will spread it. Um, and I certainly will do my part. I think it's going to help a lot of people. I want to thank you both for taking your time and your insight and your life experience to benefit others. That is what it's all about, right? Absolutely. Because somebody helped me, somebody helped Robert. And if Tony, someone comes to you after watching this and they need help, I'd be happy to speak with them. It's a, it's a, it's an absolute joy to be able to help someone else get help because you cannot live life alone. We all need help. So everyone has to ask for it. Everyone should, should not be afraid to, you're not to be judged by it. You are a, you know, I, I was in a, and I'll just digress for one second. I know you want to wrap up, but very smart person said to me when I said, can I ask a stupid question? I was in a class once and I asked, can I ask a stupid question? And you know what the, the professor said to me? The professor said, there are no stupid questions. It's only the people who don't ask the questions that are stupid. And I never forgot what he said. And that was over 30 some odd years ago. So if you have questions, ask, get help. There's nothing wrong with it. Smart people ask for help. <laughs> I'm going to put on this video at the end, a little card that I found that I had made years ago of a picture with Jesus that says, I always have time for stupid questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw so that up at the end. And I'm going to throw Robert's uh, little TikTok video up at the end. Okay. Hey guys, thank you so much. And uh, really, you're very welcome. You've been a blessing to a lot of people here. Love you guys, and I'm going to pause. Love you too. All right. Come on, I'm going to show you this trick. Ready? So you get this ketchup, right? Ketchup. You get some salt. I suppose after you put it in there, it starts heating up. Like, ready? Oh, yeah, it's starting to heat up. Look at that. Hijo de bomba.